Our scripture reading for today is from the 21st chapter of Matthew. Jesus said, listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to Jesus, He will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, this is a dramatic and disturbing parable. This story Jesus tells about a vineyard and the people he hired to run the thing. The details are cru crucial, so let's Let's relive this tale scene by scene. In fact, I'm going to give you a part in the story, an important line. It's not a line that appears in the Gospel reading per se, but these words, this question, is perhaps the most important part of the parable. So here's your line. Where's the wine? Where's the wine? That sounds important, huh? Say that with me. Where's the wine. So I'm going to recall the story and I'm going to give you a cue when you should say your line. I'll say, and they said, and you, then you respond, where's the wine? Let's practice. And they said, or I might say, and he said, where's the wine? I think you've got it. Let's begin. There was a landowner who, who wanted to grow grapes and make wine, so he started a vineyard. He prepared the soil and he planted the grape vines. To protect the vineyard, he built a fence around the whole place and he set a watchtower in the middle of it to keep an eye out for any trouble. And most important of all, he built a wine press, that ancient stone structure where grapes were turned into juice and juice was prepared to be wine. When all was ready, he found tenants, managers, workers who could run the vineyard, grow and tend the grapes, harvest them, and make wine. And then with everything in place, the landowner left them to the task. Okay, get ready, your part is coming. When it was the season of fruits, the season when the grapes would be picked from the vines, taken to the wine press, and made into wine, when this season had come, the landowner sent his servants to the vineyard so they could politely ask an important question. And they said, where's the wine? And how do you think the tenants responded to this polite question? By saying, here's the wine we have made for our master, the landowner. No, they seized the servants beat one, killed another, and stoned yet another. So that didn't go like you would expect it should. Naturally, the landowner needed to do something to get a better result, so he sent more of his servants, this time a larger number, so the workers wouldn't try any more funny business. And when these servants got to the vineyard, they asked the question a little less politely. They said, Where's the wine? 
And what happened? Same result. Can you believe it? More seizing, beating, killing, and stoning. Then the landowner got really serious. He decided to do something that would end all of this rebellious trouble. He sent his son, his own son, straight to the vineyard, because surely they would respect and do the right thing for his own son. And when this son got to the vineyard, he asked the question a lot less politely. He said, where's the wine? The tenants had already made up their mind how they'd answer. They seized him, dragged him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Because drunk with power, they figured if they killed the sun, the wine, and the vineyard would be theirs. And Jesus concludes the parable by asking his hearers to finish the story. What do you think that landowner will do when he gets to the vineyard? And we know, whatever it is, it ain't going to be polite. Jesus told this parable against the chief priests and the Pharisees of his day. That's what this passage says, at least. The religious leaders even knew it. Jesus' teaching was often at odds with the worldview of those religious leaders, and so toward the end of Jesus' ministry, their sour grapes turned into a plot to put Jesus to death. But I'm not sure this parable is only a message for ancient times, because there seem to be some modern applications. Modern applications for people like us. Still with me? Let's see. And they said, where's the wine? Where's the wine? Maybe you've said that from time to time during this COVID lockdown. Experts say wine consumption is up. Where's the wine? Maybe you've wondered that on Sunday mornings as our congregation has been communing, but only using bread brought from home to be more safe and simple. Where's the wine? Maybe that's what God is saying to us, the same way the servants and son in the parable said to the tenants who were tasked with stewarding the gifts of the master. Where's the wine? Where's the work of your hands? What have you done with what has been entrusted to you? You've heard it said, if life gives you lemons, make lemonade. Well, perhaps our lesson today is, if God gives you grapes, make wine. And if God entrusts you to be stewards of gifts, any gifts, make use of them, for God loves an abundant harvest. Is this a word of warning for us? Well, maybe, but also a word of invitation to respond to this good news. God has already invited us into the vineyard, already given us the riches of the kingdom. The merciful reign of Jesus is our inheritance. And as recipients of this treasure, God says, take care of it, grow it, and share it. Amen.